All right. Thank you everybody for bearing with me while I pushed our Facebook, our stream to Facebook Live. So we are now live on Facebook. We're live here on Zoom. Who's ready for a tequila fiesta? I am. Bill is. Chad is. Doug and Matt and Ryan, who are also on the line, they're ready. We're all ready. We hope you guys are ready. So thank you everybody for tuning in tonight. It's so great to be here with you this evening. We've had a couple weeks with no Facebook live events and we've missed you. So welcome. Welcome to our pre Cinco de Mayo fiesta. So tonight on the line, we have Bill from Diageo. He is the master educator for control states. So for those of you who don't know what a control state is, uh, New Hampshire is one of them. Um, so Bill works with control states like New Hampshire to educate consumers. So he's here tonight and he's gonna go through the Diageo portfolio of some premium tequilas. And he's gonna get you ready for Cinco de Mayo, whether you are gonna be doing a tequila tasting or uh, making some cocktails. He's got some great cocktails for you to see as well as talking through uh, some of the kind of background info on the different tequilas. So this evening, he will be going through Don Julio, De Leon, and Astral. So this is a really special event this evening because we don't even have all of these tequilas yet. May is going to be an amazing month because we are getting <laughs> so many new tequilas are hitting our outlets this month. So you're going to get a little bit, little preview. Uh, I would about half of the yeah, half, at least half of these tequilas are already available. You could have bought them before the event to mix along tonight, but a couple are on the way. So get excited, come back. We'll, we'll keep you posted on Facebook when they're going to be available. But for now, I'm going to turn things over to Bill. If you have any questions, uh, please go ahead, leave those in the chat or in the Q&A section, and we will, somebody will respond, maybe live or maybe via chat. So without further ado, let's get into it. Bill, what's our first tequila? Thank you so much. Um, well, yes, please, please. Um, you know, my screen is very far away from me, but Carolina is, is guiding me through this experience. So if you do have questions, please reach out. Um, any questions, I'm happy to answer them to the best of my knowledge. Uh, I know a good amount, but not everything. So I will do my absolute best. Um, I thought about perhaps maybe, you know, we talk a little bit about tequila as a category as a whole before we get going. Um, there's a good number of tequilas in front of me, and I'm not going to lie, I'm really excited to tuck into these. This is going to be a great uh, ending to my afternoon. So let's talk about tequila as a category. You know, really, I want to talk very specifically about what is legally, what does tequila legally have to be to be called tequila? You know, first and foremost, it must be made in Mexico. That one, that one does seem quite obvious, but that is the first and most important part. It has to be harvested, distilled. And if it's aged, it must be aged and then bottled in Mexico. And that's really a very similar thing to perhaps Scotch. Scotch has the same thing where it must be distilled, aged, and then bottled in, in Scotland. So with Mexico, we have to make sure it's all produced and stays in Mexico. We also know that in Mexico, there are five states that you can only legally make tequila in. I believe there's 26 states in Mexico, but five of these uh, allocated states by the government that say that these are the five states you can only legally make tequila in. Another one of the laws is the fact that you have to have a norm. And a norm is what you see on each of these little bottles. It actually has a norm on the back. And that's actually a reference to a distillery number. And so that is a legally licensed distillery number. So there's a good number of distilleries that we have around Mexico. And I'll talk a little bit about the distilleries and how they're dispersed up and how various different tequilas are made from that as we go through the various different lineup here. Now, <clears throat> what's really important about tequila and what we love about tequila makes it so, so special is the fact that legally it must be made from only one kind of agave. And that agave is the Weber Blue Agave. And so in order for it to be a tequila, there's about 30, 130 plus different varietals of agave all over Mexico. And a number of those various different um, varietals go into certain mezcals. But in order for it to legally be tequila, it must go through, it must have that Weber Blue Agave as the source of what we make the tequila from. But then also we're all talking about <clears throat> it must be minimum of 51% agave. Now that seems like an odd thing to say, but there are some tequilas out there which are actually a blend of tequila and other distillates as well. But these in front of us, these are our traditional. When it says on the label 100% agave, it's very much like your orange juice, you know, 100% non from preservative, non artificial. You know, that's what we wanna have here. That's what all of this lineup here is. It's 100% agave that we have in here. 
And then legally, if it must be aged, such as our reposados and our tequilas and our extra, extra añejos here, they must be aged in oak. Now, a lot of people don't realize this, that in, in the United States, when you make bourbon, legally, you can only use the barrel once. So the barrel gets used once. Each time bourbon is made, part of the legal definition is it gets used once. And then a lot of people say, what happens to the barrels afterwards? Because there's so much bourbon being made. Well, true story, half of it, half the barrels, once they're used, get shipped off to Scotland. And a lot of the single malt scotches that we know nowadays get aged in those casks. And then also the other half gets shipped to Mexico. And those get actually re rebuilt in Mexico. And all of these delicious um, tequilas that we have in front of her in front of us were actually aged in ex bourbon barrels. Now that's about 99% true because actually this little one here, I'll tell you a secret about that when we get to the De Leon Reposado. Most of your tequilas are aged in ex bourbon barrels from different companies around, around uh, America. So those are the things that we have to legally classify to, in order to be a tequila. Now let's also go through what we know about our different styles. We have our Blancos, we have our Reposados, and then we have our Añejos, and then we have these delicious ones over here. I'll get to that at the end. So with a Blanco, traditionally most Blancos are not aged in any way, shape or form. They can legally, if they wish to go in a quick barrel for a few free few weeks, up, up to uh, 60, 60 days, go in a barrel and can be age for just a little bit, just to soften them up. But most come out, especially these ones right here we have, once they've been distilled, they add a little bit of water to them and they put them in a bottle and then put them in a bottle strength and off they go. So most Blanco tequilas are unaged. That's why they're clear. They have no color to them at all. And then over here, when you get to our Reposados, our Reposados must be aged for a minimum of three months, uh, sorry, of two months. And you traditionally, you'll find a lot of those Reposado tequilas they want to just get that hint of beautiful vanilla coming through. So it'll be anywhere from three to six to nine months. But traditionally, it's a minimum of two months up to a year. And then with our añejos here in that category, it must be a minimum of a year up to three years. So that's what legally defines tequila that we have in front of us today. So let's start the tasting. What should we start with? What do you reckon, uh, Caroline? We start with Don Julio. Does that sound good? I think that sounds great. But, you know, that is a great, that's also a great question because I've got a little poll here on Zoom that I'm about to launch because Please. I, we want to know which yes. of these three tequilas does everybody tuning in tonight want to try the most? So answer our poll while Bill gets into the first tequila. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to start off with um, Don Julio Blanco. And I think I should sort of like pour and taste and, and tell the story if, if I may. So Don Julio Blanco is of course made by our lovely company, Don Julio, which you can see this banner behind us. And we have this lovely collection in front of us. Now, Don Julio was a person and it's wonderful because he was uh, really an amazing human being, an entrepreneur. Actually, Don Julio, Don Julio Gonzalez is his full name. Julio Gonzalez was his actual family name, but Don Julio Don was actually an honorary title that was given to him by um, the people that worked with him because he had such respect in the community. He was very good to the community as, as well as his employees. Now, he established this company in 1942 when he was a young, young man. He and his brother was actually part of the family trade. He would, they worked, both worked for their uncle, who was making tequila at the time in uh, Los Altos, which is the highland region of Jalisco in Mexico. And they were making tequila, and they decided at a super young age, like, we want to make our own, do our own thing. So off he went, Don Julio, borrowed some money from a, a wealthy gentleman in the local community, and started started but the foundation of what we now know is, is the Don Julio brand, ultimately opening up a distillery, Tres Magueyes, released that for a few years, and then ultimately later on down the road, it became Don Julio. And in fact, it's the same home, La Primavera, which is the home of the distillery nowadays, and that's the name of the distillery, coincidentally, the name of one of our releases as well. So let's start off with this here. Now, out of these three, we have three really very different Blanco tequilas. Don Julio's experience was he really wanted everything to be special. His idea, and his, his, he and his wife would often joke about they had six kids, but then thousands more children. They were referring to the agave. Now, with the agave, it's, everyone does it slightly differently. Now, traditionally, your agave are put in fields 
you know, especially the Weber blue agave, they're, 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 they're harvested and they're farmed in order to make sure that we have steady crops all the time. And actually it was in 1942 that Don Julio did his first crop as well. And so what they would do traditionally is plant them, but sometimes, you know, you want to save space. You plant them really close together. And Don Julio said to himself, you know, that's not good enough. I want my agave to really breathe, to really live. He said, I want my children to have space. So he planted them five meters apart, giving them so much more room. Now, if any of you have seen a full grown blue Weber agave, it can reach taller than myself. The fronds are enormous. They come so big and so wide. You cut these down and they cut the fronds off and you're ultimately left with this beautiful centerpiece, which is the piña. Now, that was one of the first things that really stood out as far as what makes Don Julio so special, why it's an ultra premium tequila. That was stage one. Stage two is the maturation of the agave. And this is super, super important. The maturation of the agave is so important and so crucial. If you bring it and cut it and harvest it when it's too young, you'll get a very bitter and a very green and a very uh, not as pleasant fla flavor in the tequila. And sometimes they call it stemmy, you know, very much like wine. I'm sure some of you drink wine out there. Very much like wine. It has that green stemmy quality, not in a good way. And so we know that the agave, once they mature to about six years or more, that's really the good time to start harvesting. Now, a lot of tequila companies will say, okay, six years, let's harvest them, let's go. But of course, Don Julio wanted to take it one stage further and said, nope, we're going to start at six years old. And then we're going to progress. We're not going to harvest them until they are actually ripe and ready. And so this is something also that's really set out Don Julio from these tequilas. And as I'm holding it here, that's allowing the tequila to be a little bit more full, a little richer. You'll find those greener tequilas. They might have been a little bit uh, early in harvesting some of those agave. But with this, we added a little bit of extra time. So I'm going to smell it here. Now with that, I can always pull Don Julio Blanca out of a blind crowd. Anytime I'm doing a blind tasting, I always pull it out. I always get these beautiful vegetal notes, almost like um, green bell peppers, a little white pepper to it, a softness. It has a little sweetness in the background to it. Absolutely gorgeous. And take a little sip. Oh, that's tremendous. That's my, that's my first and not my last sip of tequila today. So I'm very happy about that. Um, so with the Don Julio tequila, I think often a question is asked, um, you know, how should I drink tequila? And it's, and it's really up to you. You can drink it neat like this. You can drink it on the rocks. These are all phenomenal tequilas. These can all be enjoyed um, in, on the rocks or neat, but also in a cocktail. I think to myself, you know, the, the brightness and, and the crispness and the vegetal and the citrus notes coming through on all the Blancos really do make for a better cocktail experience. However, going through on these reposados, you can drink them neat, you can drink them on the rocks, but they're also quite good in cocktails too. So this is definitely something you can do and it's really, really up to you. When we start working our way up to the añejos, that little bit of extra time in there, then most certainly that's something I'll drink by itself, maybe with one cube. So here we have that beautiful crisp vegetal notes to it. And what's nice about it too, it has a nice long finish and it has a little bit of that green pepper as I mentioned before. I really enjoy this. And when I'm doing a tasting, I like to do what's called retronasal olfaction where I breathe in through my mouth and out through my nose. And what's happening is I'm actually smelling it. I'm smelling that, that beautiful distillate and this gorgeous Don Julio Blanco coming through. So this arguably is one of my favorites of this whole lineup just because of the versatility of what we have of it. As I said, great neat, great on the rocks, great in a cocktail, which I will be showing you shortly. But first, let's go into the next of our marks. Now, we have here Don Julio Reposados. For those of you that are unaware, that actually means uh, rested in Spanish. So I'm gonna pour a little less than I did with Blanco. Now the Reposado here, as we see the lineup, another great story about Don Julio and his pride and his, his, his passion and his integrity. He was one of the first people that really created, as far as we know, the idea of a Reposado tequila. He was having a, hosting a party and a number of people were in attendance 
And every single person that came to that party, he handed them this tequila, his traditional Blanco tequila that he had aged in American oak casks and American oak barrels. He'd been aging them to see what it would taste like. And a lot of people tasted that and said, oh my goodness, that's amazing. You have to produce that. And sure enough, later on down the road, he did produce this and was one of the first people to actually produce uh, a Reposado tequila. So he's always been an innovator, always been ahead of the market. So let's smell this. And I say, let's, let's, I'm gonna smell this, but feel free. If you do happen to have these at home, please join along with me. I would definitely like to not drink alone. Um, Caroline, you're drinking over there too. You, you're joining in at all? Just water tonight, but you know, maybe, okay. maybe later. But for those of you who are tuning in from home, I would love to know who is tasting along or mixing along tonight. You can uh, raise a virtual hand. If you're watching on Facebook, send us that raised hand emoji or here on Zoom. Oh, I see actual hands going up as if people have questions. Perfect. You guys understood Excellent. what I was about to ask. So we've got uh, three or four people drinking. Thank you. I'm glad I'm, I'm glad I'm not drinking alone. This is wonderful. This is wonderful. <laughs> so uh, Reposado, as we talked about earlier, it must be a minimum of two months to a year. Now I'm going to continue in talking about this legacy, this this innovation, and this this going the extra mile with Don Julio. So as I mentioned before, a number of other tequila companies will say, okay, it's a legal minimum of two months. Let's go three months. Let's go four months. Maybe let's go for, let's bottle it. Don Julio said to himself, you know what? I want to keep going. I want to keep going. So he actually went over double the legal limit. So he actually, this Reposado is aged for a minimum of eight months. So we have so much more time on it. And now it still has this beautiful, soft little hints of, of, of straw coming through, a little bit of dark color, a little bit of chocolate coming through. And we're getting this soft, delicate vanilla notes a little bit of like caramel, a little bit of toffee. It's super soft and, and the sweetness is now really coming through. Before, it was a sweetness of fruits and tropical fruits and citrus, but now it's more caramel, softer, vanilla, You're very delicate. And in the mouth, as I taste that going through, it's absolutely tremendous. It's super smooth, really, again, a gorgeous long finish to it. Absolutely delicate, absolutely wonderful, and I'm very, very fortunate that we, ha we have these here. Now, I actually have a single cask, which is a really special edition. So this is actually from one singular barrel. So you can, I'm sure, find the traditional uh, Reposada out there in the market. So next, moving along, Añejo. Now, this is a great one. Where so I love the Añejo. The Añejo here, this is going to come as no surprise, I'm sure. So Don Julio said, you know what? The legal minimum is a year to three years. Guess what he said? It's not long enough. So this is actually aged for a minimum of 18 months. So instead of 12 months, this is 18 months. And so what we do here is age again, a little bit longer in the process, a little bit longer as, as we age it. So, wow, see that really, such a difference in, it's the same liquid, by the way, going all the way through. I know sometimes people ask, is it a different liquid? Have they done something different to it? It's exactly the same liquid. It's merely a matter of time and how long until they pull it out of, out, of the, out of the barrels and then place it into the bottle. So now on the nose, it's a lot spicier. That sweetness has dissipated. Perhaps it's gone into the wood. Perhaps it's covered up by the, the spices and what we have coming out of the actual tasting. I get a lot of those wooden spices coming through, baking spices, cinnamon clove, a lot of cinnamon in the nose. Almost like you're going into a bakery that's had some toasted cakes in there. I do enjoy that. <laughs> My job is not a terrible job. Um, so now in the mouth, that's great. So, so much drier. The sweetness that was there in the Reposado is a little bit dissipated and it's much more the baking spices are coming through. It's still the creaminess of the agave coming through that roasted, beautiful agave. And again, those baking spices, the cinnamon clove, definitely a lot of cinnamon in there. More like, it's more like a, a bitter chocolate, a little bit of coffee and a little bit of, uh, a, a bit of, bit of bitter chocolate and coffee beans in the taste and on the nose. Absolutely tremendous. I'm gonna finish this one. This is great. Oh, that's great. Now, does anyone have any questions thus far as I've gone through? Uh, we've got a couple of questions from people who will be 
eating uh, tacos later and they want to know which tequila to pair with their tacos. So uh, any of them, it's entirely <laughs> up to you. You can you can enjoy tacos. Luckily, I mean, there, there is no bad thing to have as far as the tequilas. There's no bad way to do it. But you want to do, uh, you know, I'm going to make a margarita now. So I'm going to talk and make a margarita at the same time to save save uh, save a little bit of time as we go through this. So you can have margaritas. Obviously, that beautiful, refreshing acidity goes through is actually fantastic. You can sit there and just do a reposado on the rocks or an añejo neat, whatever you like, just as, as long as you're enjoying tequila and tacos. I don't have tattoos. That probably would be something I would have tattooed on my body. So I'm going to do a little quick um, margarita with our, with our first tequila. So we're going to start off uh, with a little bit of freshly squeezed lime juice here. And I'm doing just a classic Tommy's margarita. I have some agave, and this is agave simple syrup. So the agave that you buy from the supermarket, you would do 50% of the agave and then 50% water because you can see how freely it comes out, of course. And then we do our tequila. You know, traditionally we do a, a two one one as the ratio that I like to think and how I do that. So that's what we did. One and two. So the two one one is what we call a classic ratio. It's two parts alcohol, one part sweet, one part sour. And that's the easiest way really to remember how to make a lot of these drinks. So I'm gonna throw a little bit of ice in here. Any questions while I'm making my margarita? Bill, somebody wants to know if they can visit the Don Julio Distillery. Oh, absolutely. The Don Julio Distillery actually is a phenomenal experience. Uh, you do have to it's kind of a hike from Guadalajara, but you can get up there. Absolutely. It is definitely something that you can do. Uh, please definitely visit that experience. They're so lovely. Everyone is so nice there. You get the opportunity. You'll try some of the tequila out of the out of the actual barrels themselves there's the opportunity to try as you mentioned like these special editions these are things that you can actually get at the distillery that you can't get anywhere else uh so yes it's a wonderful experience definitely head up there so here we have a classic margarita the way i like to make it i don't put any of the triple sec in there but i know you can definitely pop down to the stores in new hampshire your new hampshire state liquor store and grab some of that i'm a big fan of my traditional margarita here i like to do a little bit of lime on there very simple. Is that in shot of the camera? Is that, is that still there? Yep. Okay, brilliant. <laughs> so we have one part lime, fresh squeezed lime juice, one part um, agave syrup, uh, which is equal parts water and agave. You, just, you know, you can get it from any of your supermarkets. Uh, and then of course you have your Blanco tequila. This is, you can use a Reposado tequila if you want. If you want to spice it up, those people having tacos tonight, you can add a little bit of jalapeno in there, muddle it in there, or you can get a little bit of hot sauce, put it in there and shake it in there, whatever you wish. Have a salted rim have a tahini rim, anything you want. That's the beauty of this. At the end of the day, it's for you to enjoy. It's your drink, do whatever you wish to enjoy it in your particular way. So that was our first drink. We talked about the margarita as probably we believe in the United States is the most popular drink that to each to have. So now we're gonna move on to this next particular family here. We're gonna talk about De Leon. This is an incredible company. Obviously, um, this has been more well-known. It's, it's a newer company to, to, uh, to, the, to, the, to the family and to the world established in the uh, it was, uh, 2012, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. And so I have yet to unwrap this. Now, what we do here is a slightly different process. These all three are tequilas from the Highlands. All three are produced in a traditional way where we take the agave and we roast them in an oven. We use a traditional steam oven. Uh, we put them in an oven, steam on the outside, and, and they're roasted. For the Don Julio, we do that roasting a little bit longer than the average person would do, maybe 72 plus hours. Some of them might do a little bit less, maybe 50 hours. Now, what really sets aside De Leon tequila to some of the others is it's the next part. It's the fermentation. So we take the agave, we cut it down in the fields, we cut it up, we bring it back to the distillery, we put it in the ovens and we roast it. Don Julio roasts their uh, agave a little bit longer than everybody else does. Because again, we really wanted to sweeten it, soften it up, get those molasses out. The next part is we grind it down, we crush it, and we want to extract what they call the agua miel. So in Mexico, that means the honey water. And what that is, is the beautiful, sweet, imagine almost like maple syrup. You know, in New Hampshire, you guys know a lot about the maple syrup, but it's that extract that we squeeze from that beautiful roasted agave. It trickles out, we add water, and we add yeast and we ferment it. So we do a traditional fermentation. Now, what happens with De Leon, what makes De Leon so special 
is that they do an extra long fermentation. They like to go a little bit further and a little bit longer. Sometimes it can take up to five, five to seven days for fermentation. Most fermentation only takes two days at most. So what that does is that really changes the flavor of the base spirit. So with a De Leon, we're gonna get a completely different flavor from the Blanco tequila. So a Blanco tequila, because of it's, and I got this beautiful, look how gorgeous it is, this gorgeous ornate bottle, I'm sure you've seen it out there. And of course we have our, our, our wonderful counterpart, um, PDD, Mr. Combs, who is actually also uh, uh, an owner of the company and also a spokesperson as well, which is absolutely fantastic. So let's smell this now. Oh, that's wonderful. Very different from the first one. Don Julio Blanco, much more that vegetal minerality with the De Leon. It's softer. It much has much more vanilla essence to it. Again, white pepper, black pepper, little light citrus notes to it, but really smooth in the nose. Really different tequila in the mouth. Totally different. Much softer. Again, it's a sweeter notes to it. That extra long fermentation period really adds a tremendous amount of complexity to it. There's so much going on here. There's light, delicate spices in there. There's a little bit of that citrus fruit, but it's very low down. It's much more earthy, a lot more vanilla, a lot more soft, and a little bit sweeter than the Don Julio is in the beginning of that one. Absolutely gorgeous. That's such an amazing experience, and it's, it's very, very different. And again, we have so many, such a variety of different styles right in front of us. So what we have coming up next, which is very special. Now, tell me a little bit about the availability of this. I do believe that I'm trying this before all of you. Some of you may have tried this already, so you already know it's out there, but when is this coming to New Hampshire? Bill, which one is that? This is the De Leon Reposado. Chad, I will let you take that one, but while we give him a minute to look that up, I have a couple of questions for Bill. Please. All right. So going back to Don Julio for a second, um, what is your favorite, as, as an educator, <clears throat> what is your favorite variant of Don Julio? Ooh, honestly, it's, it's, it's a tough call between, you know, Don Julio 1942 really is just the, the epitome, the special, and I'll, I'll probably end up on that one if I have time. I have a little sip of that. And we'll talk about that. Um, but the Reposado is, is my go-to because I love the Reposado, Don Julio Reposado on the rocks. Um, it's such a great sipper. It's really good and old fashioned too, you know, so that's something I really enjoy. So for me, the versatility and the flavor profile of the Don Julio Reposado is really my go-to. Um, that's the one I enjoy the most. But again, they're, they're all so different and so fortunate. And they, as you can see, this is my life. You know, this, this, is, this is my world. It's not terrible. There's some wonderful things that I have uh, uh, access to, you know, the Tangeray, the uh, Tangeray gins and some of these beautiful single malt scotches from the Game of Thrones are great too. So Reposado tequila is my answer. All right. right, so let's talk a little bit about the De Leon Reposado. This De Leon Reposado, again, something slightly different. Traditionally, as I mentioned before, you will find that most, not all, most tequilas that are aged in Mexico are aged in ex-bourbon casks. Now, this one has actually been finished off and uh, has a little bit of that initial um, bourbon cask, but also a wine cask. And it's a beautiful French wine cask that has had a sweet dessert wine. It has a sauterne cask. So here we have this beautiful, much, it's, a, it's unlike the Reposado over there, which has that sort of more of a brown, this is more of a golden hue to it, much more lighter in color. Really different now from that Reposado. This has these tropical fruit notes for a reposado which isn't something you would normally find much more vanilla more for caramel this has tropical fruit notes but also has that beautiful toasted vanilla in it and then in the mouth oh that's really smooth little drier notes to it it has definitely tastes a lot of that beautiful soft sweet sauterne from the background it takes all of the edge off of that the acidity has gone all the way down really lush beautiful again wine notes to it but tropical notes tons and tons of tropical fruit notes to it absolutely gorgeous with that really great really really great super finish floral delicate like so much different than you will find in traditionally most of the other reposados that you'll find out there in the market 
So next, I'm going to make another cocktail. What am I making next? I'm making the, is it the hibiscus highball? The Paloma. I'm doing the Paloma next. So this Paloma is Paloma time. Paloma time. I know everyone's very excited about the Paloma time. So with the Paloma, you know, we traditionally know in the United States that um, the margarita is something that we associate with Mexico, but actually the Paloma is the national drink of Mexico. And it's a really delicious, and when I go out drinking tequila, if I have a cocktail, this is my go-to. It's absolutely delicious, absolutely simple. So I cheat a little bit and just put just a splash of lime juice in here. So I'll put literally just like a quarter of an ounce of lime juice to start off with. And then again, just to give it a little bit more of an essence, just a splash of a quarter of an ounce of this, um, agave simple. Then I'll put about an ounce of fresh grapefruit juice. The fresher, the better. I use this beautiful fresh squeezed pasteurized grapefruit juice. And then we will do our tequila. Or in the tequila. Now at this point, if you see I'm building it with no ice, and this is super important. So I'm building it with no ice. So now we have all the mixture in here. We're gonna let that mix in together. Now I will add the ice. And you'll see it's about halfway full right there. And then I simply top it up with soda water. This is bright, refreshing, absolutely gorgeous. Uh, this is just a soda stream. I drink a lot of soda water, so I decided to buy a soda stream. That really works out in my favor economically, uh, and I can have soda whenever I want it. I never run out. Um, and this I will garnish with a little twist here, or a little half wheel. This is gorgeous, an absolutely wonderful drink to have. Refreshing, simple, easy, anyone can make it. If you want to keep it simple, grapefruit juice, soda water, tequila. I know some places get fancy. And again, if some of you might want to get fancier out there, how do we think outside of the box? Put a pinch of salt in there. Put a spicy rim, put a salt rim. Um, I mean, it's not that dissimilar to a salty dog, you know, the uh, cocktail. So it has that grapefruit, it has that soda. For me, this is great. It's super refreshing. It's kind of like a skinny girl margarita too. You know, there's minimal calories in that. And you know, vitamin C, it's good for you too. So there's that possibility there. So we have this gorgeous, gorgeous cocktail right here, very simple. And we made this with a De Leon Blanco. So that's wonderful. Now, ultimately we're gonna try um, the next tequila. Now this is really, really cool. So our next tequila we're gonna try, we have here is our Astral uh, Blanco. This is wonderful. This is new to our family here. Astral has been around for uh, a few years, but this is new to our family. You might've seen it before, this is new packaging. So we have new packaging, which is absolutely gorgeous. We kept that beautiful blue, but Astral in Mexican or in Spanish, it actually means astral, so astrological. So we do a lot of a play on that. This bottle here, we have that circle. Um, I don't know if you can see it, but you'll definitely see it when you come close to the bottle and you see the, the labels. It has the little spikes around the outside and the crosses, and that's actually a reference to the um, Mexican astrological star signs. So there's a lot of things coming forward with this company. So we're gonna be doing a few cocktails you'll see in social media. Each astrological star sign will have a different cocktail based on it. Uh, and we, we try to keep that. And here we have in the front is the capital A, talking about the astral with the blue Weber agave, because of course it has to be made with blue Weber agave. It's actually wonderful. And this is a great distillery too, because it's, it's really a, a newer setup in this distillery for a number of different reasons. It's very much technologically advanced. It's the, it's, it's, it's footprint, it's eco footprint is actually minimal. There's a lot of recycling and upcycling as far as the distillery goes. These are a lot of solar power um, and it's actually quite wonderful. It's a very fuel efficient distillery. A lot of the distilleries we have in Mexico have been around for a good number of years. So they're not quite as efficient, but this is an absolutely efficient distillery. And what makes it even more special is the fact that we're taking two very simple processes in making this tequila. So the same process that went through Don Julio and the same process that went with De Leon, we do with Astral as well. So we take our agave, we slow roast them in ovens with a beautiful clay ovens. And then ultimately we use what we call the tahon, which is this wheel. You might've seen these sort of that the romantic view in some of these videos where you see this wheel 
in a circle and there's this, this little, little donkey just sort of maneuvering it around and pressing it. So what we do after we've roasted the agave, we put it in this concrete area and it gets slowly pressed. And what that actually does is it really extracts not just the sweet liquid, but the bitter liquids, which really add a lot more complexity to it. So something else that we do that's a little bit special and a bit unique is we take all the fibers, which they call the bagasso, and it's all the fibers as well as that aguamiel that I mentioned before. So these two te tequilas over here with the Don Julio and the De Leon, they separate the bagasso fibers and the aguamiel and just use that. So for us, we actually go through the whole process of the fermentation with the bagasso in there. And what that does is adds so much more complexity to it. Really unique, nutty, earthy, very similar in style almost to what De Leon does. And we also have these amazing new technological uh, advancements in tequila as well. So we, we use a, a modern system of copper, uh, old system of copper pot stills, which is double distilled. All of these are double distilled. And then we also use column stills. So what we're actually having is a mixture of two different liquids in here with Astral. So it's really the combining of new and old technologies, which is really made for a really, really cool tequila, which I'm going to have to try now to prove it to you. So let's go ahead and smell this. This is a great one. And I do believe, if I'm not mistaken, this should be available in New Hampshire by the end of the month. I don't want to make any promises. Uh, this don't is on one way. of those tequilas that I said this month is going to be amazing for. It is due to, <laughs> it is due to arrive before the end of the month. <clears throat> so yes, there we have it. Um, so let me smell this. Let me talk a little bit about Can you still see that bottle? I want to make sure I get that product placement yeah. solidly. I don't want to make sure that my other cocktails aren't away. I'll put it right there. There you go. So with this, very different. Very different from the other. This, much more of that beautiful uh, lime peel. Very vegetal, similar to in, the, in the stance to Don Julio. But with this, a lot of lime, a lot of citrus, a lot of lime, lemon peel. A little bit of tangerine in the nose as well. So you're getting a lot of bright citrus notes to it. But again, in the background, I get these beautiful softer notes of vanilla and hints of green vegetables. Give it a little taste. That's wild. So this is so cool. You can really, if, if you're kind of a nerd like myself, you can taste that sort of richness and the earthiness coming from the traditional Tejona and Bagasso process, but then you can taste that green, gorgeous, light citrus notes coming from the more modern style technique. So it's really an amazing combination of the two. People are often confused by it, but very simply, I mean, if you look at Kettle One, which is one of those fantastic uh, vodkas that you know I have the, uh, the, the, the pleasure of, of representing too, Kettle One is a similar system. We have some traditional column, uh, traditional pot stills, you know, with a heart. The heart of uh, Kettle One is, is made with that beautiful winter wheat. And then it also goes through column stills too. And we mix those two liquids. And of course, I mean, if you've tried Kettle One out there, arguably one of the most beautiful tasting um, vodkas that you'll find, it has that combination of old and new. And so this is really something that encompasses that too, which I absolutely adore. So this is a really cool tequila. Uh, I think, what's the price point on this coming through? Do we know what that is? Give us a second. Yeah. The Astral, <laughs> sorry, the, the people in the chat are asking questions on the Astral. Um, the Astral Blanca is actually, uh, it's normally $34.99, but it's on sale for uh, the month of May for $32.99. Um, so as soon as it's available in our locations, it immediately goes on sale. That is fantastic. I love that. It's a, it's a new mark. Uh, please, do you have questions for me? I would love to answer any questions you might have. Yes, we've got we've got a handful of questions for you. All right. So one of these questions, I feel like you already answered because you made the Paloma, but I'm going to ask it anyway. What yes. is a what is a great summer tequila cocktail? I mean, again, I'm, you're starting to see my bias. The answer is all of them. Um, <laughs> for ease and simplicity, you know, not everyone can find agave. You know, it's, it's a little bit harder. You can go to the corner store and find soda, water, and grapefruit juice. So for me, a Paloma with a Blanco, you can do a Paloma with a Reposado too. It's really great. It's really simple and easy. But if you want to switch it up, instead of doing grapefruit, use pineapple. Blanco tequila, pineapple, and soda is such a great cocktail. Light, refreshing, has those tropical notes. 
New Hampshire, you know, it's, it's, you know, sitting by the lake. It's absolutely wonderful. I think that's something else too. You can switch it up, whatever you want to do. There's a lot of different fruit juices out there that you can mix with these. Think about these as tropical, um, tropical distillates. You know, you have those coffee, vanilla, cocoa flavors there, but then in the Blancos, you have those green uh, floral, uh, tropical citrus notes to them. So you can really switch and change whatever you want. Every cocktail at the end of the day is one ingredient different from another one. You know, you could take that Paloma, switch it out for pineapple juice. It's a whole different cocktail. Really, really simple, you know. Same with the margarita, you know, instead of lime, you could use lemon. If you don't like lime, you can use lemon. It's absolutely fine. So all of these things are something you can do and interchange and, and, and switch up on yourself. So sort of related, uh, Tracy wants to know if Trader Joe's has agave because she knows that that's where I do my grocery shopping. Oh, Tracy, 100%. Yeah, yes, they do. 100%, 100%. I, I, I don't want to speak for every supermarket, but I am 99% that nowadays every supermarket has Angostura bitters and agave. Now, what's interesting is the agave, you might find it in one of two different places. I wish you didn't know this, but it'll really be in the baking section. Or you can actually sometimes find it in the cocktail section next to the Bloody Mary mix. So that, and they'll actually probably have a margarita mix and some margarita salt. So uh, yes, definitely uh, Trader Joe's 100% does sell that. Uh, and a lot of like Hannaford's, um, some of you guys have up north, trying to remember the other chains you guys have in New Hampshire, but yeah, those will definitely have it. Shrouds has that as well. So it's definitely something you can get hold of. It's not too hard to find. Um, now, something I didn't mention that I definitely want to mention is quite important. As I mentioned, some of the, the eco-friendly uh, and eco-awareness that our company has with our straws. I mentioned, you know, with this, there's the, uh, instead of when we're using Tahoe and going around in a circle, back in the day, they used to have a horse. We actually have a, a solar powered little motor that moves it around. That bagasso, as I mentioned, that sits there in the pulp, we actually use everything. So it's like a nose to tail, if you understand that culinary uh, reference. So what we actually do is we take the bagasso and there's a fantastic, uh, process and system that um, we actually, the, our sister company, Sombra Mescal, started off is where they take the actual fibers, the bagasso, and what they call is upcycling. So it's not recycling, it's upcycling. They take the fibers and they actually mix it in with cement and local uh, dirt to make uh, adobe bricks. And there's an adobe brick foundation. A lot of times there's a lot of um, uh, earthquakes in Mexico. And so what they've been doing is, is using the ups, the upcycled uh, bagazo fibers to make these bricks to build homes for local families that were uh, lost their homes during various different uh, troubled times. So it's a really, really wonderful uh, thing you do. So when you're buying this, you're actually knowing they're also supporting a company that builds these bricks and gives them free to families in the local communities and quite literally is building a foundation for these homes for these people. So it's a really, really, really cool thing that they do. Um, and I'm actually gonna make our, our, our last cocktail here, which is just a little twist. Of, uh, you know, we had that question about um, what kind of cocktails can you do? So I'm gonna do something a little fun. Uh, I'm English, I like tea. Um, something that I think is a really fun thing to do is to put tea in cocktails. Now, this is something that's again, super easy to find. If you go to your normal supermarket, I'm gonna do what I call a hibiscus highball. Now with this, again, I'm gonna start off just a little wee splash of agave, just to add for a little sweetness to it in the bottom. Again, probably just a quarter of an ounce there. A little splash of lime to complement it. Again, it's just a splash, quarter of an ounce, you know, like a, a teaspoon's worth. And then I have made, this is just tea. This is just hibiscus tea. I steeped it, it's pretty strong. And I'll probably put about, an ounce and a half of that into the glass here. So that's just hibiscus tea and water. There's nothing else in that at all. And then I'll put some of this gorgeous Astral, if I can take the top off. If you have any questions, please throw another question at me while I'm making this cocktail. Oh, excellent, we do. Uh, uh, wait, sorry, where does where my question go? Uh, does putting tequila in the freezer change the notes or flavor? Yes, 100% it does. It does indeed. So think about it this way. Um, leftover pizza. You know, if you have the pizza and it's warm, you can really smell it, really taste it. You get those herbs, but the, the tomato, the cheese. When you put it in the fridge, I mean, we all like pizza the next morning in the fridge, but when you taste it, some of the flavors are softer. Would you agree? We, some of the flavors are a little bit more subdued, a little bit softer. You can't smell them as much for sure. So by putting tequila in the freezer, 
what you do is you subdue some of those flavor notes. Now, some people like that, and that's, that's nothing bad about doing that at all. You know, this is a high enough proof. It won't smash, it won't break in your freezer. You are hiding some of the flavors, but that again, it's really at the end of the day, it's your tequila and how you drink it. Um, I know that some of the scotches, like we have Johnny Walker, uh, one of the, the master distillers once told me, if you take Johnny Walker gold label reserve and put it in the freezer and then just pour that, that's gorgeous. It's a little bit softer. It's a lot smoother when you drink it as well. So that's really fun. So it is something you can do. It's entirely up to you. And does it change your flavor? 100%. Yes, it does. All right. So for this, I put my ingredients in, a little, little splash of lime, a little splash of agave, about an ounce and a half of this just simple uh, hibiscus water, let's call it. Fill up uh, uh, my tequila as well. And then again, half fill this with ice. And then we're going to, it's my soda water again. And for those of you that are, you know, calorie conscious, you can very much avoid the agave. Just don't put any agave in there at all. And then I garnish this with this fun little lime wheel. This simple, refreshing drink here, you can see it's a slightly different color. This is a wonderful addition to the various different things you can do with tequila, as you can see. What I really wanted to show is the variety and the versatility of these tequilas and what you can do with them. Um, you can do martinis, you can do tropical tiki drinks. There's so many different things that you can do, you can change up, and it's actually fantastic. And, and hopefully you'll get the opportunity to mix some of these. And does anyone actually have any, any more questions? I, I, it's definitely question time right now. So I think we're gonna we're gonna make people wait a few minutes for questions because we have some trivia questions actually. So these you do yeah. So these are these trivia questions are just for fun. So everybody who is here on Zoom tonight, you are all already eligible for tonight's prizes. So um, these trivia questions are just for fun. So Bill can have a couple sips of the cocktails that he made, and then we will ask him the other questions that you guys have been asking. We've got quite a few. We've got some for Chad as well. So let's go back to fire, that first. Fire away. Let's go back to that first tequila that we tried. So first off, we had Don Julio. So our trivia question for Don Julio. Oh my gosh, where did my note go? Okay, there it is. <clears throat> what year did Don Julio start his own business? So this is just for fun, just to give Bill a little break. Some, just a little hint. So some of you on Facebook and some of you on Zoom have already commented that this year is a, a favorite of yours. Hint, hint. There it is. So wh whilst, whilst, yes, whilst, whilst you're pondering this, I'm going to go ahead and open this bottle of 1942 uh, and perhaps have a little taste of it as we're going through these questions because it, you know, it's, it's definitely my time to have a drink. So if you guys didn't get it yet, the answer is 1942 is when Don Julio started his company. If you want a bit of a little fun um, little, little note to Don Julio was also a pioneer in, ironically, the shape of a bottle. So previously in Mexico, you would find, like you see some of these bottles on my shelf behind me, a lot of the tequila bottles were tall. They were recycled old wine bottles and, and, and scotch bottles, and they were tall and they would sit there. And Don Julio said to himself, I really want tequila to be part of the experience, but not interfering. So when you were sitting down at a table, like with myself, that bottle would interfere with the conversation. So he was the first person that invented the short tequila bottle. So he was, again, that pioneer. He said, that's it. I want my bottle to be part of the experience, but not interacting and being part of it. However, you fast forward a number of years when he released, you know, Don Julio 1942, which at the time was one of the very first uh, extra and yejos, you know, taking it past that, past that two year mark, you know, with two and a half years. So he said to himself, you know what, this is special. This is not going to be hidden from the table. I want this in the table. And this is a beautiful thing. And actually the shape of it is reminiscent of and designed after a, um, one of the fronds, one of the leaves from an agave. So then we had a related question. Somebody wants to know which of our outlets carry the Don Julio 1942. So it is currently out of stock, but it'll be back soon. Uh, so stay tuned, check our website. Um, you'll, you can always find up-to-date inventory at liquorandwineoutlets.com. Uh, you might even be able to get this for curbside pickup when it comes back in stock. 
All right. So let's ask Bill another one of your wonderful questions before we do a little bit more trivia. Uh, Bill, what are some of your other favorite tequila cocktails? Ooh, um, I would definitely say, I think I mentioned it before, is a, a tequila old fashioned. Um, I like to, you know, if you're really going to go out there, I would do instead of sugar, agave, because that's the natural sweetener that it comes with it. So that would make a lot of sense. And then instead of doing a traditional bitters of something like a, a Peixotes or an Angostura, you can use these various different uh, mole bitters, which would be absolutely tremendous because that's sort of based on the Mexican dish of mole. So it has the coffee, chocolate, the, the various different baking spices in it. That would be a great bitters. And that's an amazing way to do it. And then instead of a lemon over the top, I would do an orange twist. And if you really want to go fancy, you could do the burnt orange twist where you take a flame and then you squeeze the orange peel and the little burst, you ever seen those before? The little burst of flame comes across. And that's probably one of my favorite uh, tequila drinks other than just tequila. Awesome. Uh, before we do the next trivia question, I just want to apologize. I misspoke. The 1942 is not out of stock. I was thinking the De Leon that's not here yet. Forgive me, please. The 1942 is in stock. There are 309 bottles in the state. You can get it currently. That is a very precise number. <laughs> Thank you. I'm really sorry, everybody. All right. So our next just for fun trivia question. What is the youngest age a Weber blue agave begins to ripen and be ready for harvest? So we'll give everybody a minute to answer that, you know, just for fun. Uh, Bill, what are your plans for Cinco de Mayo? Uh, I will be working. I will be doing some more of these seminars and doing some education. I will be uh, traveling around the country. I will be in Philadelphia uh, for Cinco de Mayo, and I will be uh, hosting some trainings. Do you think you could like deviate from Philadelphia up to New Hampshire and uh, come to the taco tour with us? Listen, I, I, I love the sound of that. And uh, truth, truth you know, I will be in, in New Hampshire uh, in June sometime. So ex ex expect a tour uh, and around that time period. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, you guys, a few of you got the answer right. So Ian, uh, another Bill, and Timmy, you guys are all correct with six years. That is the answer. All right. Let's see some more questions for Bill. Um, what is the traditional accompaniment to tequila in Mexico? Oh, excellent question. Now, um, you know, it, it's gone back and forth a number of times. I, I think something that is uh, not quite so well known. One is, you know, orange. They'll often do, uh, you know, with a Blanco tequila, they'll do a slice of orange with a little bit of salt or sometimes tahini across the top of it. If you've ever done this before, sometimes you go to a bar, you do, do a shot of tequila and you bite into a lime. Your tequila is already acidic. Do a bite into an orange instead. Ask for a slice of orange instead. It's a game changer. I assure you, you'll see that. It's unbelievable. But uh, a lot of these smaller uh, villages that I found in, in both in, in in, in Oaxaca, Mexico, but also in the highlands of Jalisco, where, you know, Oaxaca, where they make mezcal, and then Jalisco, where they make tequila, they have something called sangrita. And sangrita is basically this accompaniment on the side. It's almost imagined like a pickleback, but what it's made of is often um, tomato water, tomato juice, um, a little bit of agave, and some spices. And what that does, it's almost like a mini side of a Bloody Mary, and it's a little sweet and spicy and savory. So what you'll do is you'll You'll sip your tequila and then take a little sip of your sangrita. And the sangrita, every house has a different recipe. So it's kind of cool. You go to a different bar and you're like, oh, we want to go to the bar where Steve works because Steve's sangrita is just the way I like it. So every single bar has a different style of sangrita that it will sometimes serve with that. And so it's really, really a kind of a very cool way of sipping tequila with, uh, with something else that accompany, accompanies it and adds a good uh, flavor pairing profile to it. <clears throat> I'm just gonna smell this Don Julio 1942 and, and, and just taunt you there, Perfect. Caroline. <laughs> All right, this next question is, well, actually we've got two. So Chad, 
everybody is asking for pricing. If you want to take a second to look that up, I'll ask Bill another question. Um, but Bill, another question for you so we can give Chad a minute so he doesn't accidentally say something like I did and tell you all that something's out of stock when it's not. Um, I'm merely the voice. Don't, don't blame the messenger as far as, as, far as everything goes. I'm, I'm just doing what I'm told here. Yes, what is another question? You're doing great. Um, somebody joined us a little bit late and is wondering if you could please reshare the ingredients for the Don Julio margarita that you made. So I made a classic margarita, which is called a Tommy style. If you Google it, uh, it's after a bar in San Francisco. So to the Tommy's margarita is basically or like what we call the two to one ratio. So it's two parts tequila, one part freshly squeezed lime juice, very, very important, it has to be freshly squeezed lime juice. And then one part, this agave simple syrup, which is, again, if, if for those of you that remember what I mentioned earlier, it's equal parts water and agave syrup. So when you go to, and that's the reason why it's in this glass bottle, because it comes in the plastic bottles it is. So I would pour it in here, halfway full and then add water and I just leave this in the fridge. Definitely keep it refrigerated. It's going to be a lot more shelf stable if you refrigerate it. Um, and so that is a great mixer. It's great as a sweetener. It's good in your coffee, FYI, much healthier than regular sugar, is, especially white sugar. Um, so the Tommy's margarita that I use, one part agave simple syrup, one part fresh squeezed lime juice and two parts tequila. And again, you can use either the Blanco or the Reposado or the Añejo. All right, Chad, what do you have for us? Um, so currently, um, all of the products that are on this tasting are on sale, except for the Reposado, the Anejo, and the uh, Don Julio 1942. But um, the Astral Blanco is currently on sale for $32.99 when it arrives in our retail stores. Uh, the De Leon Reposado is currently on sale for $42.99 when it arrives in our retail stores. Uh, the De Leon Blanco is on sale for $37.99. Uh, the Don Julio Blanco is currently on sale for $49.99. And the Don Julio Blanco 1.75 liter is on sale for $111.99. Um, and then in addition to that, our Anejo for the Don Julio is on sale for $61.99. The Don Julio Reposado is on sale for $56.99, and my absolute favorite is the Don Julio 1942, which is uh, on its $169.99 right now. Awesome. Thanks, Chad. All right, everybody, we've got one more trivia question just for fun, and then I'm going to announce the winners of the prize packs for this evening. So for those of you who win our fun prize packs, I'm gonna be emailing you and Matt will be sending out your prizes. So last question at Astral, what do we do with the leftover agave fibers? So I'll give everybody a second to answer. So just a reminder, for those of you watching on Zoom, you are eligible for tonight's prizes. For those of you tuning in on Facebook, please register next time for our next live tastings. Uh, we can't give you a prize if we don't have your email address to email you when you win. So we need you to register on Zoom. And then Matt, we do have one more question. I'm sorry, not Matt. Uh, Matt is going to send prizes. Bill is going to answer questions. <laughs> yes. <laughs> please uh, how do you prefer to drink tequila neat on the rocks or in a cocktail or does it depend on the situation you know it's the latter it really depends. Well, uh, it, in at the end of the day it depends on the situation if someone's buying me a tequila i will take it any which way they give it to me so i'm really just you know i'm just happy to be receiving tequila um i will say traditionally with the blancos i'll have them often in a cocktail with the reposados i'll have them perhaps with one cube of ice in there just to open it up a little bit, maybe two cubes of ice. Well, sometimes, you know, if you've seen those cool scotch bowls uh, of ice, the singular one ice cube, I will sometimes do one large ice cube with a reposado. Now with the Don Julio 1942 and the Añejo, these higher end tequilas, I tend to just favor and sip them by themselves. But at the end of the day, it's really up to you, however you wish to enjoy it. You know, um, I know traditionally, you know, the, the classic American cocktail, the Boilermaker is definitely something I often enjoy. You know, when I have a can of beer, and then, you know, a tequila on the side, you know, sipping them slowly side by side. That's a really good pairing. Often a Mexican beer with that, a Tecate, really good. But, you know, New Hampshire is home with some pretty cool breweries. And I know you guys sell all the fantastic beers up there. So, 
you know, some of these great beers would pair very well with some of these tequilas. So, I mean, definitely a beer and a, and a beer and a tequila tasting side by side would actually be something that's, that's, that's very, very good to consume as well. Awesome. All right. We had a lot of correct answers. So officially the correct answer is to make bricks. <clears throat> now, some of you answered to make bricks mixed with concrete to make bricks and to build houses. Those were all technically right. You guys were paying 100% attention. correct. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I'm glad that worked out. Good job. Uh, Bill, just one more question for you before we announce our winners this evening. Uh, how long have you had your amazing job? So um, I have been, I've had the pleasure of working in the restaurant industry for many, many years. I worked in Boston for a good 15 years. Um, I have actually was a master of whiskey and then have been working with Diageo for, for over nine years now. So I've been very fortunate to work for this company and work with all these incredible spirits. Um, so yes, it's, it was a, a long, difficult road to get here, but I, I'm very fortunate to now be um, one of the master educators for the national team. Excellent. Oh, actually, one more question, and I like this one. So we're a little over on time, but it's a good one. Uh, Bill, will we see you at the Distillers Showcase this year? Um, I, I think so. <laughs> yes. I, what date is that? I think I have been asked to come. What, what, what is, when is that? Oh, Chad, do you know? I think it's the first Thursday in November. The first Thursday in November. I believe it's the third. It so, was discussed. I'll I, I do believe that I will be there. I actually had done it previously. When I lived in Boston as a master of whiskey, I actually went up and did it. Uh, I've been a few times. It's really cool. I've enjoyed that experience. And so I would be really happy to come back. Uh, I don't want to sort of, uh, my, my, my handler uh, and boss is on the line. So I don't want to make any, uh, uh, any firm statements, but um, it has been discussed. So thank you very much for asking. And hopefully you will see me at the Diageo table um, tasting some of these beautiful um, distillates that we have in front of us. Awesome. Well, all your new virtual friends want to see you in real life because <laughs> now they're blowing up the comments with that. They want to come and see you. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's lovely. Thank you so much. <laughs> all right, everybody. So now it's time to announce the winners of our prize packs tonight. So for those of you who pre-registered, you were eligible to win one of three prize packs with some cool prizes from the three brands who are here with us tonight. So without further ado, the winners are uh, Daniel, Michael, and Sarah. I will be emailing the three of you uh, right, after to, right after we end the Zoom, and I will be uh, asking you for your contact information so Matt can send you those prizes. So just as a reminder to everybody, um, we've, these are pretty cool prize packs. Uh, they include everything you need to celebrate Cinco de Mayo in style. So you'll get a Don Julio pool float, glasses, ice molds, taco trays, bartender, bartending apron, De Leon cocktail shakers, and an Estrell bar service mat. So for those of you watching on Facebook, I'm sorry that you weren't eligible, but please register in advance next time and you'll be eligible for some great prizes as well. That's um, awesome. Our next virtual event is Thank you, Matt. Um, with Messiah Iraq in a couple of weeks. And there is not prizes, but there is a coupon for people who register. So we try and sweeten the deal for people to register in advance. So check out our event right to see uh, all of our other upcoming events. The Stiller Showcase will be in November, hopefully. Uh, and hopefully we'll get to see all of you there. Hopefully Bill will be there and the rest of the Diageo team. And thank you all so much. This has been a really great evening. You guys had some really awesome questions. It's, as always, it's been a pleasure to be your moderator. Thank you, Bill. Thank, thank you, so you much. Uh, Drinks with Bill on Instagram, if you guys want to follow him. <laughs> yes. Of course, To thank you to Chad for having all of the information that we need at the tip of his fingers, inventory and price-wise. And we also had Matt, Doug, and Ryan behind the scenes organizing this event, helping put together those cool prize packs. So thank you, everybody. We hope to see you again soon. Have a great and safe Cinco de Mayo. Please drink responsibly. Drink tequila Cheers. responsibly always. Good night, everyone. Good night. Thank you.